Steve Weiss, I don't know how many times Colin Kaepernick has said, shown, posted, relayed that he was ready, willing, and able to come in and help a team. Hasn't moved the needle. Uh, it felt like the plan was always to blackball him, or if you prefer, whiteball him out of the league long enough to where you could use this as an excuse. Well, he hadn't played in five years. He throws that halftime of a Michigan game, uh, thanks to his good buddy Jim Harbaugh. Does it move the needle at all? It just kind of feels like the teams know that. Owners know that. They know he they know he could probably help them better than some of the people on the roster already. They're just not interested in signing him. Does Saturday make a difference when it comes to teams and how they view Colin Kaepernick at all? Well, we'll see. Um, I don't personally think so, but we'll see. I mean, I think there could be a team that could bring him in, kick the tires a little bit, but well, they've had the opportunity to do so for five years. Now, I will say this a couple of years ago when there was a workout arranged down in Atlanta and there were a lot of scouts there because I was there um, and a lot of those scouts are black scouts, black assistant GMs, whatever, who came to take a look at him, who could hear what he wanted to say and maybe ask questions that maybe other scouts and things had not asked him before. And then he went and had a private workout at a different location and only two or three of those personnel execs traveled that distance to go see him. But that, may have, that might have alienated some people. But I think the trigger that could be a little different now is the NFL game plays more to what Colin Kaepernick was really good at back in San Francisco. There's a lot more running. There's a lot more RPO type game where his skill set, if it's still there, could work. So I don't know if it moves the needle. Um, you know, I asked Pete Carroll, the Seahawks coach, about Colin Kaepernick because they had him in for a conversation years ago. And they're clearly in need of quarterback help. But he said, look, Cap deserves a shot. Not sure it'll be with us. The same refrain that you're probably going to hear from a lot of other teams. But, you know, we'll we'll see. I think some of the younger head coaches that might have a different mentality. Um, but we'll see if it's it's the owners, guys. The owners have to sign off on everything. And so far, we've seen that is something they've not been willing to do. Yeah, it feels like I mean, this is the cynical side of me, but uh, they've given us huh. no reason to be anything other, other than cynical. Um, it feels like the downside is his upside. It's like what they don't want to have happen is he comes in and balls out. You know what I mean? Because they, they like right now they can they can peddle the notion that he's been out of the league too long and he's rusty because how can you disprove that if he doesn't come in and perform for you. If he comes in and outperforms your backup or God forbid your starter and now he's your starting quarterback, how bad do all of them look collectively? You know, because it's like a workout. Is it too much to ask for a workout or to go to our man Chris Rock a peak? <laughs> can, we, can we get a peak? <laughs> can, can he get something? <laughs> he came. He came and get that, you know, so it just feels like they don't want him to show what <clears throat> we've all known in over the last five years and you know, what we still know now is that he's better than most of the guys on NFL rosters. Is that fair? I think I think that's fair because, like you said, we've been led to be nothing but cynical when it comes to the belief in Colin Kaepernick. And if he were to show up and do better, trust me, there are some coaches right now who'd be like, I want him on my team. But there's also some owners who'd be like, ooh, you know, that, 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 that cut's still raw, even though it's five or six years old now. I don't know what our fan base is going to think about it, this and that. You know, it's it's just so weird because I do think you've got a new era of coaches who'd be like, I'm trying to win ball games here. If Colin Kaepernick can help me win ball games, I'm down, right? But then again, the people who call the shots know how much, how polarizing to this day Colin Kaepernick is. Crazy. So it's not always about football. 100%. It is 100% crazy. And the fact that we're still having this conversation five years out where no team has brought him in for a workout Guys get brought in for workouts all the time, and they haven't even brought him in for a workout. You can do this in private. It can I'm be not, completely clandestine. Mike, I'm not comparing these two things, Michael. I'm just saying, like, from a PR standpoint, let's say, like, this is polarizing. Let's say you're afraid of the backlash. You know what they should have brought him in? Right after the Browns traded for Deshaun Watson. I knew like, you were going to say that. I mean, it's like, okay, say, right? you, you, want a, say you want a news dump? You want a news dump? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Like, okay, then make and make people choose, yeah. make people tell on themselves and choose. You know, again, that's right. not a commentary on Deshaun Watson. I'm strictly talking about the idea that the PR from Colin Kaepernick could be that bad compared to what? Steve, you know? 100%, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Steve, you're talking about the owners. You said, you know, it's it, this this rests with a lot of the owners. Are we talking about the the c word? 
Are we talking about collusion? Is it what is could one owner just say, look, my coach wants him, my GM wants him, I'm going in there. Do you think any kind of collusion is going on among the owners? Because I always thought it was coaches and GMs, but it probably is the uh, owners. What do you think? Well, I mean, look, it's collusion. That's look, no team's taking a shot on him so far, right? So for me to come out and say collusion, I'm not going to come out and say that, but no team's taking a shot on him. But we saw a team come out in the Steelers and hire Brian Flores, and everyone thought Flo was not going to get a chance to work again, right? After he filed right. a lawsuit against the NFL. So I'm sure if Josh McDaniels went to Mark Davis and said, let's bring him in, I, I want Mark Davis to be like, cool, right? But Mark, Mark Davis might be the outlier of an owner, right? He's not necessarily in the Friars Club, so to speak, because he does things a little bit different, kind of like his father does. I do think there are some owners who would probably give, okay, I don't see the harm in bringing him in. But I still think overall, some people like you, like Michael was alluding to earlier, uh, he's been out of the league for five years. Why are we wasting our time with him? X, Y, and Z. I think there's going to be all kinds of excuses made why he can't instead of one excuse made why he could. You know, uh, Mike, Mike brought up that great example of kind of slipping Colin Kaepernick in the back door as we're all focused on uh, Deshaun Watson. We're focused on Deshaun Watson. He's in Cleveland. Now Cleveland has to make a move with its other quarterback, and I'm not talking about Jacoby Brissett. Uh, it, do you get a sense that there's any market for Baker Mayfield? And if so, where? Not much of an immediate market. I do think, I think B Baker's owed $18 million. I think what the Browns would tell a team like, look, in exchange for whatever draft pick, third, fourth, whatever, we'll pay $10 million of that salary. I think that market would heat up. I just don't think right now, before the draft, teams are like, we have to have Baker Mayfield, maybe post-draft, We'll make a move where we'll give them a 23 draft pick instead of a 22 draft pick. Look, something could happen before the draft. We'll see. But, you know, you look at still some teams like Seattle. You know, we just talked about Drew Locke is their guy right now. And that's going to be an open competition. But even if he wins it, does that make them a viable candidate to compete with the Rams and the Niners and the Cardinals in the NFC West? And then when it comes to starting jobs, I mean, you're looking at other teams like the Atlanta Falcons, like the Carolina Panthers. I doubt either one of those teams would take on Baker Mayfield, who's got one year left on his contract, especially after the Panthers did it last year with Sam Darnold and extended him. So I think both those teams go to the draft. So there's not a huge market for Baker Mayfield, maybe the Houston Texans, but they seem very committed to the young guy, Davis Mills, which is why when Baker came out and issued that statement, it was kind of like, be careful what you wish for, because the market for you may not be nearly as sizable as you think it is. Speaking of the Seahawks, real quick, and you referenced Pete Carroll earlier, uh, anything to these rumors that DK Metcalf can be had for the right price? I mean, I guess anybody could be had for the right price. So I don't yeah. know if that'd make it much different than anybody else. But is this another one of those? Is Seattle going to like full on blow it up, or is that just more more rumor than uh, than fact at this point? Yeah, I, I, I'd be stunned. I, I'd really be stunned to give up a, a prospect okay. like that unless they think they can fetch you know, two first rounders right now. And maybe they say, we'll blow it up. We've got all this draft capital. Um, but I think right now that's when you say again, fetch for the right price. That could also be, you know, for some land over in Dubai, a couple cars, <laughs> you know, and a whole lot of other things involved as well. Hey, Steve, tell me, uh, tell me about some uh, uh, draft picks that you think are uh, risers and fallers. I know, I know, I know it's, it's, it's April. And these things change by the day, uh, by the hour. But any, from from your sources, anybody that you feel like is picking up some momentum, and it, 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 is anybody like our guy Kayvon Thibodeau? Uh, is anybody falling? I keep hearing he's falling, which makes me think he might be rising. You know, because uh, you, you know, know all kinds of lies going on right now. You guys know how it goes when you hear like, "Well, I'm," you know, I kind of question his work ethic. I kind of question this and that. That's somebody speaking anonymously, trying to get teams off of a guy who they really have interest in. So Kayvon Thibodeau, he is a wild card, though. I mean, you know, a lot of people are like, he, he's got all the tools, he's got the production, but will it be consistent production? Is he someone you're going to have to wait for, or is he going to deliver it right away? Well, there aren't too many There aren't too many Nick Boses out there who deliver right away as an edge rusher, so coach him up, right? We keep on hearing about all these great coaches, but Kayvon Thibodeau is, is someone who's interesting. I think these quarterbacks, the Malik Willis game, um, and the Kenny Pickett game. Some of these quarterbacks keep on hand, they're not really worthy of a top 10 pick. 
But now you're starting to hear the conversation, like someone's going to get sweet on one of these guys and they're going to move into the top 10 or, or if, if they're not already there. So who will that be? Because now they're going on their visits. Now these guys have a chance to sit with owners and owners like, I want this guy to be the face of my franchise. You guys know how this goes. I also want to talk about a couple of black college prospects, right? So Akil Glass, the quarterback from Alabama a and he is a draftable player, maybe a day three guy, but a 6'4", 235-pound mm-hmm. prototypical guy. He can really pump it, can really throw it. Someone to look out for in the back end of the draft, a developmental guy. Okay. Um, you know, Jacoby D- Durant, the safety down, or the cornerback, South Carolina State, another player uh, to look out for as well as Marquise Bell, a safety out of Florida a and I know a lot of teams really like him because he's a hybrid guy, right? The safety who can play slot corner, who can cover tight ends. So, you know, it's always my duty as an HBCU graduate to pump up some of these HBCU players when there have been no players, only one player from a black college is drafted over the past two years. I think this year there'll be three or four with a lot more getting into training camps. I got an idea. Between now and the draft, and Steve, I know you got a lot on your plate already. I know you're very busy. But what do you say we do a whole appearance of yours, a whole segment devoted to just that? Like I love to like, on it. like your your scouting reports on HBCU prospects, and and that and that's the entirety of the conversation. I'm so serious. Like let's just make it like almost like a brother from another special, you know, on just that, you know, and and you, and you walk us through guys to look out for, or guys that we should be aware of, guys that the league should be targeting. Uh, in the draft, but, but meanwhile back at the top though. I know Aiden Hutchinson was in Jacksonville yep. today posted video from Jacksonville. Does it feel like and you know, he has to say this, you know, a few weeks out from the draft, but does it feel like he's a lock to go one given what Jacksonville did uh, to address the offensive line in the offseason? Does it feel like he's a Jags guy? It really does. And everyone he talked to said not only is a productive player, but just He's one of those guys, you heard me reference Nick Bosa. And if you ever watch him play, the dude, he never turns it off. I mean, the on switch is constantly on, and that's what he gives them. So, right, you know, you you, you pair him, you know, you, you've got Josh Allen on the other side, two monster pass rushers. That helps. I mean, just to create the energy that's needed down there, it does seem like he is going to be the guy. We'll see if maybe the offensive line again, that was a thought, but they've addressed a lot of that in free agency. But Aiden Hutchinson, and, and plus, he's the safe pick. Everyone says he's the guy who you're not going to miss on. And in a year where there's no quarterbacks likely to go number one, that's the type of player that you want, especially for an organization that's trying to figure out a lot of things. So um, when it comes to Daniel Snyder, uh, Michael is calling him the most huh. protected owner in professional sports. Uh, whether it was his racist team name and he didn't, you know, in fairness, he didn't found the team, but he certainly protected that name for as long as he possibly could racist team name, um, sexual misconduct, uh, sexual harassment, scandals, investigations, so on and so forth. Seemed like he's been Teflon perhaps until now. Still not certain whether or not there's any truth to it, but this is a hell of an accusation that the commanders now got to get in the habit of saying that. Uh, allegedly withheld funding from the pool of visiting team money that's distributed uh, throughout the league. What do you know? This is our front office sports.com dropped this report over the weekend. What do you know about uh, the validity uh, of this as the U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform looks into the financial practices uh, of the commanders? The only validity you have is, is the report. I do not know how truthful this is. The NFL and the commanders have not commented on it. But as Pro Football Talk came out and said, if there was nothing there, you come out and you you freaking you put out a a lit match with a fire hose on this one, because this is incredibly damning. If that is the case, I mean, this is one of these things you mess with these owners money, especially over something like this, which frankly, that's a cardinal sin. (laughs) Correct. And, And frankly, it sounds rather trivial. Like, why are you trying to be slick skimming something like this? If this is the case, um, this could be the final straw to say, okay, we can get him out. The league is trying to get different owners in there. We know we know the Broncos are up for sale, and they're trying to, if they cannot get a majority owner who is of a diverse culture, at least have diverse minority owners as part of that ownership group. This could be another market. And we know in that city, if they turn things around, how much of a game changer um, that is Ooh. being in the nation's capital. So A black owner in D.C.? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on now. Hey, I mean, you, a, Chuck, hey, go-go music, the, go-go music might have a revival if that's the case. 
The but other thing is, is could, could anybody yeah. have could anybody have less credibility? It's like this story is so unbelievable. Like why I stoop to this? If anybody would do it, you, it would be Daniel Snyder. You know, yeah, it's just, right, it's, right. It's, yeah, yeah, it's but 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 uh, here's the thing. You know, the fact is with all the other allegations, you know, especially the workplace stuff, that it's something yeah. like this that really pushes people over the top. When there's just so many other yeah. things that are that are that are troubling, that that didn't move the needle as much as this could. But again, this could be. You know the final the final step off the plank if that's the case. Yeah. But again, we just don't know the validity of of right. this accusation. Right, allegedly. Michael, what were you about to say? Yeah, no, I was gonna. Well, you just you just said that, Steve. And you bring out the the, the old joke. Hey, it, it, a joke that's not a joke. They got Al Capone on tax evasion, right? <laughs> that's that's the thing that got him down. After all the yeah. other stuff he did, that was it. But I'll say this: uh, what Patrick Mahomes said about uh, Justin Herbert and the Chargers. I'll see it when I believe it. You know, yeah. I just don't think I don't think Daniel Snyder. He's done so much to be kicked out of the club and he's still in the club. So I'm not sure this will be the final straw either. I just don't believe it. Yeah, it's hard to say. Look, the owners, they protect each other. They may not like one another, but they protect one, one, you know, one another because they know each other's business. And so yeah. if one guy knows one person's business. Look, we saw everything. Even going back to the John Gruden emails, that had nothing to yeah. do with John Gruden coaching the Raiders. It was somehow an investigation into the Washington football team's workplace behavior, and Gruden was the only one who, <laughs> who took a hit. Come on. And he, he I mean, was working for ESPN at the time. After yeah. thousands of emails, hundreds of thousands, away with right? is John Gruden. You come away with John Gruden and nothing there you go. on Snyder. Yeah. Hey, so we'll see. Steve Weiss, we appreciate you, man. Let, hey, seriously, let's do that. I mean, the clock it's almost draft time. We like a whole Weiss appearance strictly devoted to scouting HBCU prospects ahead of the 2022 NFL draft right around the corner in Las Vegas. We appreciate you, man. I, thank you so much. I'd love it. You guys take care. You too. All right, Steve. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.